it was a biggest shock about what happened. Um, yeah, Vegas I, was very shocking. What really freaked me out is that um, if it could happen at a movie theater and an elementary school, like, why not the Vegas Strip? But then again, um, the way I think about it, it was just a matter of time because... These type of incidents happen like... Um, when Sandy Hook happened, I was working with kids. And it was devastating because they were the same age as those kids. And now there's people having a good time at a concert in the United States, in Vegas. And that's where you go to freight out your problems. And then there's this shooting. And you think it could literally happen anywhere. Well, um, it's a... It's a common thing in America, but a lot of the time when it happens, it, they're portrayed as the shooter, they're portrayed as someone that's a rogue, like a lone man, different from the rest of like the white men in America. Really, like, talk about him being like a violent person. Like, if it was somebody else, maybe like somebody like me, they would have like just pretty much drugged me all down, like, you know, told me like everything I did, you know, like how violent I am. Um, just pretty much they portrayed him as just almost like a good person, a good Samaritan, but he just did something wrong. It's, let's say if it would happen to be a person of color, it would all be grouped together. Like they would all be portrayed as what that person was doing. But that didn't happen in this case because he was a white man. Um, when it's a Caucasian individual, a Caucasian man that commits one of these massacres, it's always like, what was wrong with him psychologically? Why didn't he get help? Like, there's a tweet that I saw like from like three years ago from this comedian, I forgot what his name is, but he, he's a, a comedian of color, and he said that every time like a white man like does a mass shooting, it's like, oh, must be nice to represent yourself and not an entire religion or not an entire race. He's, He's personalized about his life before he shot anyone. If it was an African American man, it's like he was smoking weed when he was 13. You know, he got pulled over for carrying a stash on him. A Latino dude, they're gonna find a picture of him when he was 14 playing around with his friends holding up West Side or some kind of gang sign. You know, they dig into that background, into the negative side, unlike when it's a white man. person of color, like, that person would pretty much be, like, targeted as someone who maybe have been, like, a drug dealer, or might be carrying a firearm who, like, who's very violent, and would, you know, target African-American people as people who are thugs, or, like, you know, drug dealers, people who are really, like, criminals. And, you know, not all African-American people are, like, criminals. Like, I'm not a criminal. The people who act like race isn't a thing, why is it all about race, who are usually white people or super conservative Latinos, I've noticed, too, which is... Bull. They say, let me see the whole video. You don't have all the evidence. And yet, Philando Castile is like bleeding out. His girlfriend is filming it live on Facebook. You know? And it's like, let me see the whole video. What happened before, though? What happened before, though? She's saying for everybody to see, you asked him to pull out his license, and he was doing so. And you could hear the cop crying, hysterical, which, you know, he wasn't even charged, which is. I'm not surprised, you know, but if it was a white dude, you know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, he got off safe because he did nothing wrong. The dude on in Anaheim, there was an off-duty cop that grabbed the kid, the Latino kid on his lawn, and shot the gun into the ground or the air. But it's fine because he's a white cop, right? But you get pulled over and you're black, you're automatically labeled as, well, what did he do? What are his priors? What's on his record? What did he do before the girlfriend started um, recording and, and he was bleeding out? It's just how America thinks. But he is white, so people aren't going to portray him as a criminal. That's just, he's not, people are going to look at him like he has a mental problem or like he didn't get help or, you know, like he was, you know, going through some traumatic thing in his life. The news, they state like he didn't have a record, but if it was like a black individual or someone of color, It'd be like either a mugshot, it'd be somewhere. It's not being portrayed as him a criminal, he's just a man. And he's just someone from America, you know, who just happened to, you know, go crazy, you know. And that is pretty much wrong, I don't think that's right. We're like in this cycle of Latino cholos with the shaved head, 
or um, some black guy that has his mugshot on, like on the nine o'clock news, da da da. Another another man robbing the liquor store, blah blah. It's always a person of color. Like there's no white men doing any of these crimes. A, it is a yeah, and again another minority. You're gonna get someone engaged and get and get that fear in them, and that's what the media likes to do. Let's say the shooter was black or was Latino or was a Muslim. A, they'd be terrorists right off the bat, if it was a Muslim. B, that mugshot, if he hadn't shot himself, that mugshot would be front and center. He's white, simple as that. That's the first thing to go. Um, throughout history, it's been repeatedly proven that white men have all the privilege. They can get away with nearly anything and everything. We still have this idea, especially in the media, of like white purity and like you can do no wrong. But if you're darker shades, and you pertain to a certain type of religion or you have a certain type of name, you are automatically targeted as a criminal. And we can't have that with white people because white is good. This is gonna be um, used as something to blame the mental illness for or other mental Ill pe mentally ill people that are like actually need the help. There's something you know, something wrong with him, there was something wrong with this guy, why did he receive the help? Uh, we see all this in media, and we start blaming anyone who, you know, we see as Muslim, Islamic, anyone, like, and first of all, people don't, can't tell the difference between these religions. We see anyone with a turban or, like, anyone that looks like that, and they automatically think, like, oh, they're terrorists, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna bomb something, they're gonna but kill something. We, we're always being reminded of September 11, and what happened on our side. Why aren't we looking what's happening on their side? Is America racist? In my opinion, yes. The solid yes, absolutely. And yes. <laughs> There's no other city. Like, I don't have to explain that. Um, it's just yes. <laughs> it has always been here and it always will be here. You know, like as much as we try, we want to get rid of it, but it's always going to be here. It's always it happens in crime, it happens in schools, it happens with children, everyday lives. Everywhere we go, it happens. I, and a lady decided to cut in front of me because she was white. And she thought that I should let all the white people go in front of me and I should wait my turn. And it was kind of like, this happened to me as a 16, so it's kind of like, really? Like, are you serious? Are we still doing this now? All right, well, whatever. <laughs> Racism is still happening in America as of today. And I still believe that America is still racist. So I do believe that America is uh Definitely racist. Um, ever since the beginning of this country, which was not founded by white individuals, there were people s with my skin color, slightly darker than me, already living here, already cultivating here, already having families here, already practicing certain beliefs here, already surviving here. And what did the Europeans come and do? Conquest. Let's take over this. This is ours. And that is no different from 2017. What? This is my country. I don't care if you came over here when you were three. Screw DACA. This is my country and you're out. I don't care who brought you here. You don't belong to this society because you're not light enough. They talk to my, well... I'm white. I'm white passing as heck. I'm Mexican. I was born in Mexico. So I, get, I can get away with it because my skin is light enough. I can pass as white. And so, basically this, they treat me the same way as they treat any other white person because they don't... I'm light and I'm fair skinned. You know, my hair is straight. It's whatever. Involving colors, they wouldn't see that, you know, I'm a happy person. You know, I come from... I might not come from a privileged lifestyle, but I come from a good family. I come from people who support me, good resources, people who, who are actually, you know, good people. Like, I'm mixed with Mexican and black. My dad is a police officer. No. My she had a troubled past only because she um, displayed a lot of attitude um, in junior high and she was in a domestic violence relationship. So that means that this is the reason why she lashed out. But they would blame it on me as a woman. And like, I'm crazy, and because I'm Latina, like this, you know, that spicy freaking stereotype, whatever. You know, she must be fucked up in the head and throw her in jail. 
I think that's how I'd be portrayed. If they were to have portrayed me in the news, they'd automatically label me as black. They wouldn't see me as a family earning person. My family being a really good family. They'd see black. And coming with black, crying. My name is Bridget. I'm 28 years old and um, my major is journalism, bilingual journalism. And I am Latina. I am Panamanian and Nicaraguan. My name is Brittany, or Brittany for the English speakers. I am 20 years old. I am an English major and I am Mexican. I'm James. I'm 21 and my major is communi uh, communications and then I'm also multiracial. I'm Mexican and black.